Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today we're going to be talking about a drunk driver who goes into a lot of different reasons why she shouldn't have to have an alcohol tether. If y'all don't know what that is, I'll explain it later. Let's go ahead and get into this. Good morning. Ms. Gonzalez, would you please state your name for the record? I'm Helita Gonzalez. All right, good morning. And today's date scheduled for sentencing on your client's plea. I believe it's a uh, show cause. I'd say show cause, yes. I apologize. I'm Yeah, she did not get the alcohol tether on September 11th as ordered yeah, as a result of her probation violation. So this court indicated five days jail. All right, so your client was sentenced on August 14th to 18 months probation for her plea to an amended charge of operating on visibly impaired. There was a, a probation violation, which results in technical violations one, two, and three. Two of the tests that your client took for drug testing were diluted samples, and the third test was positive for alcohol. So a, a violation was scheduled, <clears throat> at which point your client pled guilty to the probation violation. This court indicated five days jail. We were suspending that jail until November 6th at 9.45 a.m., and she was having an alcohol tether for 30 days. Okay, so I'll get you through all the technical jargon because I've already watched this, so I can summarize it a little bit more. So what ended up happening is this individual was in court because she was drinking and driving. And then, uh, so now they're here because they're doing a uh, what they call a show cause, a reason why she didn't do something. She was supposed to take the alcohol tether, and she didn't do that. So now she's in court trying to explain why she didn't take the alcohol tether. Now, an alcohol tether is something you would put on your ankle. Um, I believe it's called scram. And you put it on your ankle and it can uh, it can test and see if you've been drinking because when you drink, that alcohol eventually will come out in your pores. And so it tests to see if you've been drinking. She was supposed to get this alcohol tether, but she didn't. And so that's what we're here for. Let's move forward a little bit. Now, this random guy has nothing to do with this case. He's waiting for his case to come up. And his case is pretty simple. And we're not going to watch his because his was pretty simple. He pretty much was drinking and then got caught and he got bonded out. That's pretty much all that happens. He's going to have a court date next week, which we may or may not watch. So I'll just explain this before we get into it. So pretty much she says the reason she didn't get the alcohol tether is because she couldn't afford it. So with an alcohol tether, it does cost weekly payments and hers costs $84 a month, which comes, I mean, $84 a week, which comes out to $336. Some alcohol tethers can cost you $500 a month. So the reason she says she didn't take it is because she didn't have enough money to pay for it. So we cannot afford any of that. Okay. So, ma'am, here's the thing, right? You're on probation for an alcohol-related driving offense. You violated this court's terms of probation. Setting aside the diluted samples, you test a positive for alcohol. A mere two weeks after being sentenced and ordered not to consume the alcohol. So in lieu of sending you to jail, this court suspended your jail and also indicated 30 days on the alcohol tether. Your other option could be to go to jail, ma'am. So I understand you may not be working or that you're not working, but I find it extremely hard to believe that you get zero assistance from anybody that you know. Or you don't have any means by which you can borrow money from somebody and pay somebody back. Not a weekly thing, no. What I was going to do with the 200 that I was going to get, because it's like a twice payment, 200 and 200, was get the tether. And I thought that that 184 was going to go ahead and take care of the whole tether for the 30 days. So I said, okay, it's not a problem. 
I don't have anybody that I can borrow weekly $84 to help and then pay them back because I won't be able to pay them back, especially right away because I'm not, I have no income. I don't get any help. But you should be back to work within a month is what yeah, was I mean, put for. I can be behind in bills. I have a son that I take care of by myself. I don't get any type of assistance from his father or any anybody. It's literally me. Take care of my son. I take him to daycare. He gets to daycare. And, and who's paying for daycare? It's through the state. Okay, so that's what leads to this individual sitting here. That's why you're going to see this judge just sitting here contemplating what they're supposed to do. And if you didn't hear any of that, I'll break it down for you right quickly. So pretty much she says that she can't pay for the tether. Uh, the judge is upset that she can't get somebody to help her. She says, I can't pay for it because she says she's been injured. If she does not have, her surgery is going to be on October 13th, I believe. And then she can go back to work and be able to pay for the tether. The tether is only for 30 days. OK, so some tethers you have to wear for 90 days, depending on your offense, how many times you've done this. Um, but hers is only for 30 days. And so she's saying that she can't pay for that three hundred and thirty six dollars so that she's not going to get the tether. I've already explained all that. But the judge is pretty upset because she's like, wow, you know, the only reason you have to do this is because once we told you that you couldn't drink, you got busted for drinking two weeks later. And here you are saying that you can't do this one thing with this tether. I just find it hard to believe. Here we are. So let's skip, part, skip ahead a little bit. This is like a 20 minute conversation. I'm not going to show you all of it. I'll explain it uh, quite a bit of it. But I want you to see how furious this judge gets. Because this person is trying not to go to jail, even though it doesn't seem like they're trying. Treatment court. So you had to have had agreed. You had to agree to it. Yes, I agree to it because he asked me could I have worked with the teller, and I told him no, that I couldn't. He asked me would I be um, going to survive for the teller. I spoke to the gentleman that does the survive for it. I agree to do that. I just don't know when if that person starts. I asked my probation officer, and she said that if she's not assigned a case, someone will be assigned. And then I'll get, I think you said, the product goes forward to the right And when were you sentenced in that matter? Um, this was Monday. Yes. Next Monday. And that offense date was when? Um, I want to say this right quickly. So, I don't know what job you couldn't do that would, I mean, I'm just being honest. She's a bigger lady here. I would imagine that even before she hurt her knee, I don't see her doing any job that wouldn't be sedentary. I don't see her working at a warehouse or anything like that. So I, I and especially she having these charges, she's more likely going to get a job like at a local, you could work at a call center, or even if she has a job like working at Dollar General. I know people who work at Dollar General, then they just sit down. They just sit down and they just don't have to do a whole lot of moving. I just don't see how she could not have found at least one job that would allow her to just sit down and be able to do her job at a cash register or something, like a gas station or something, you know? You can do that. Just sit down and then the, the person who comes on the next shift, they'll do all the stocking. You know, as long as you do your job, you do what you can. But I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Oh, but that, oh, that's right. Because that case wasn't brought forth until just recently, correct? Correct. Right. So you had two pending OWIs. So we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. Two weeks she violated. But at the same time, this court ordered her to refrain from using alcohol. Within two weeks, she violated. So instead of sending her right to jail, this court suspended five days of her jail and gave her the opportunity to get an alcohol tether. So as you can see right there, she the reason she's getting the alcohol tether is because they told her not to drink. And in two weeks, she drank. And so they're like, OK, so to keep her from going to jail for another five days, not another five days, but going to jail for five days, they said, get the alcohol tether. 
And so instead of getting the alcohol tether, she didn't get the alcohol tether because she said she couldn't afford it. So that's why the judge is getting more frustrated. It's like, we said, don't drink. And you drink. We said, get the alcohol tether so you don't go to jail. You don't get the alcohol tether. And now here we are. And she's pretty much like, what do you expect me to do? Do you expect me to just sit here and say, hey, you know what? We told you not to drink. You drank. We told you to get the alcohol tether. You didn't. And you expect me to just what let you walk out of here free and just be able to go do what you want? When clearly you can't keep yourself from drinking and you can't get the alcohol tether, ma'am, I don't trust you not to drink. So it's crazy that you think I'm just going to let you leave this courtroom. No, you may have to go to jail to keep yourself off of alcohol. That's where all of this is coming to head. This is a drunk driver who is refusing to follow the rules pretty much. She told she was told not to drink. She drank. She said, get the alcohol tether. She said, pretty much said no. And she, the judge is like, I can't put a drunk driver back on the streets who's not even willing to stop drinking for a couple weeks. There's just no way. And she didn't do that. And so what am I left with? What are you left with? At her, uh, I, I believe I represented her at her violation of uh, probation. She was forthcoming at that. If I recall correctly, she was at a get together. Someone gave her some punch. Oh, that's right. You tried saying that you weren't aware of that, but then you end up drinking a lot of the punch. So, you, so she said that the reason she got caught drinking is because somebody handed her some punch. And then the judge is saying, oh, yeah, but you ended up drinking so much punch that you were drunk. You were that unaware of there being alcohol in the punch that you drink a ton of it. Okay. Right? That's correct. Judge. You drink a whole lot of punch. Um, so she's, so she's here like, before you I, today. This is garbage. Explaining that she's into jail. She doesn't have the money to pay for a tether. You know, as I've explained already. She I want you to season. keep in mind, from what I saw, this is a six hour session. Not this one video, but this judge is sitting in this courtroom for six hours. That's why you see some court dates are so far away because these judges have to sit in here, get all this information, have all this ready to go. And then they got to sit in the courtroom for dang near all day long and just go from person to person to person to person to person to person. And so, yeah, I know some of y'all get frustrated how far the court dates are, but it's like, dude, when there's a lot of people breaking the law, it just is what it is. $400 a month disability, and that's her soul. You know, that's what she has to pay all her bills. So, so when you begin, you don't know when you're beginning sobriety court? No, I don't know quite yet. Hopefully, I find something else. I did reach out to my um, probation officer immediately. Any type of email or call or anything or a number that was given. We're gonna move forward a little bit. I'm done with this court. Uh, it, as she indicated earlier, she is uh, solely responsible for her child. I, I don't see how that is going to be possible. Oh yeah, so I don't know. Right, and revoke probation, have your client serve some jail time and be done with this court. So the judge said that she should go to jail well, and we'll be done with this whole thing. She says she can't because she has a kid at home. She indicated earlier she is uh, solely responsible for her So it's job. like the judge is like, man, I can't do anything. Y'all expect me to just let this lady walk free. Are y'all crazy? I, I don't see how that's going to be possible for her. Well, Perhaps your parents are going to have to take care of the child for a little while. Uh, so pretty much it's just go around, ring around the rosy. Let's get, uh, here, here's the part where the judge gets kind of fiery. You're a danger to the public, quite frankly, with your alcohol consumption. But at the end of the day, you violated this court's order. You're a danger to the public, quite frankly, with your alcohol consumption on a continuing basis. <laughs> And let's not forget, when you were arrested in this manner in April, you were a point two two. A point two two. That's two times the legal limit. Point zero eight. She was at a two two, almost three times the legal limit. And I understand right now that you're you have limited income because of your injury, but. 
you're choosing not to utilize or attempt to utilize any financial resources that you may have. There are individuals that you could absolutely ask to borrow some money for from and pay them back in a, num in a number of months when you're back to work. But you're not exercising that option. I will say this, though. I disagree with the judge here. There's not always somebody who's willing to help you. You made you just you just laid it out. Um, I'm not on this woman's side at all. But there are times where people aren't willing to help you anymore, and it sounds like she's the person who has tried to exercise all her options, or she already knows that people are going to tell her no because she's she's what it sounds like is she may be an alcoholic, and people get tired of helping people like that because they know where the money's going to go. So there is a good chance she can't get any help. I am for the judge sending her to jail because this person clearly doesn't care um, about the alcohol. It's not like she it's not like she was alcohol free and she can't do this stuff. No, as soon as they said stop drinking, she immediately went out and got drunk again. It's just like, no, you can't let somebody out, out like that. Somebody who's drinking and driving and is obviously a danger to the society. Um, but I do agree that she may there may be people in her life who are like, no, we're not helping you. I do not have help whatsoever. Because the judge is looking at it from her life. The judge obviously may have a cleaner record and have a better rapport with people. So she may be able to go to people, but some people in this life, there's no, there's nowhere to turn. If I did, I wouldn't even have hesitated to get, get the tether. Don't have any questions. Okay, but you've indicated that you have your parents. That doesn't mean that they would look quite like I. Certainly, they're alive, yeah, but that doesn't indicate that they're there to help me financially or anything like Appreciate that. Appreciate you. Did you ask them? I have reached out. I mean, my, both of my parents, they have their own things going on. I understand that. Did you, well. did, you so ask, ask, did you ask them specifically for the money regarding the tether? I have asked, but I would have had the help for it, and I wouldn't have the problem. I wouldn't be standing here today. It would have been crazy if her father walked in. It's like, Judge, I was willing to help, uh, and she turned down the money. Anyway, let's continue for a little bit here. The judge is about to do her sentencing and what she decides to do. That was from your violation of your sentence for your probation violation. You still have the five days that was suspended. So this is not the same. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, so right. please, oh. You have to report tomorrow. Sorry, guys. Perfect. Skip it again. Court's going to indicate five days jail. So she gets five days in jail. He, the guy over here, he says, can she get a little time to get her orders in together? She says, you better report tomorrow. Or obviously, they're going to come pick her up. And then that would be even worse. So she gets sentenced to five days jail and she is still on the hook for another five days in jail because of another violation she did. She's getting five days jail because she broke probation for not getting the alcohol tether. She also has another five days because remember, she uh, tested positive for alcohol after they told her not to drink. So she's probably looking at 10 days in jail. Um, obviously she keeps drinking. It'll get worse and worse and worse. I'm just saying she was pretty much trying to beg this judge to say, hey, look. I don't want to go to jail. I'm trying my best here. And it's like the judge is just like, how? We told you not to drink. And it took two weeks for you not to drink. And you said it was because somebody gave you some punch. And you just drank a whole lot of that punch. No. Uh, and then she says, okay. And remember, after that violation, they were willing not to put her in jail. And they were like, okay, you're going to have to get an alcohol tether to keep you from doing that. She agrees to the alcohol tether. Which is why the judge was also frustrated because she gave her the option, go to jail or get this alcohol tether. She says, okay, I'll take the alcohol tether. When she was supposed to go pick up the alcohol tether, she said she couldn't afford it. And the judge is like, I made you aware of all of this and you said you could do it. And now when I'm saying, hey, you can do this and not go to jail, you ain't going to take the alcohol tether? And so she doesn't take the alcohol tether. And the judge is like, there's just no way you think I'm going to let you off the hook for drinking and violating probation twice. You think I'm going to let you walk out of here because you don't have enough money? No. You're going to jail, and we'll see you again at sentencing, and hopefully you can figure it out. Because one way or another, you're putting on this alcohol tether. And because you want to keep violating probation and making a 
mockery of me and think this is a joke, you'll be sitting in jail for five days. Good luck. All right. So, well, she doesn't do the gavel thing, but that's it. In fact, they don't do that in um, these uh, city courts, these civil courts. It's just, this is just regular everyday ticket stuff, you know? So anyway, let me know what y'all think. Y'all think this is wild. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And if you're not, sorry, I do enjoy these videos. I love making these videos. I love watching the police and I love watching these court dates. This is a six hour video and I still got more I want to make on it. Um, and I just love it. I don't know why I do, but I'll still make other videos for you guys who don't like the police stuff and you don't like the court stuff. I'll make my in-betweens where it's something on ultimate or some random TikTok. I still got y'all. That's why I make three videos a day to make sure I'm mixing it up. I'm a variety YouTuber, you know? I'm trying to mix it all up, baby. But I do have my biases, I'm sorry. Don't forget to like, subscribe. I'm out of here. Goodbye!